welcome and thank you for joining our webinar, The Unspoken Reality, Why There's the Gender Gap in STEM Plus. And just for the audience, when we say STEM Plus at Gotara, we include any technical field where women are still underrepresented. So marketing science, data science, of course, uh, economics, finance, technical sales. So our definition of STEM Plus is pretty broad. Today, uh, I'd like to introduce our CEO and founder of Gotara, Dr. Dee Sangita. She will kick us off in a few minutes. And I am Dana Ginn, the COO of Gotara, and we're so thrilled to have you here. A few logistics for you joining, uh, two things. Number one, we love where you're from. So in the chat, please put your location. And if, if you'd like your name and your company that you're representing, please put that in the chat. Second logistics item, as you have questions, as we are going through the data, please post those in the Q&A section, which is found at the bottom of your screen. Post those in Q&A and the last third or so of the 30 minutes, we're gonna spend answering as many questions as we can. All right, so again, thank you. People are putting location name in the chat, questions in the Q&A. All right, so let's just kick it off with Gotara and why we're here. So Sangeeta, fill us in on why you started Gotara in the first place. All right, uh, welcome everybody. Good morning, evening to folks joining around the world. I can see literally it is around the world. Uh, so thank you for joining. Um, uh, uh, starting Gotara for me uh, was two reasons. Um, I grew up in technical fields and I was a business leader, a technical leader in a variety of different roles in a variety of different companies. And two things that I saw where I saw a gap was there are not enough women. So I found myself the only woman in the room, whether it was middle management or senior or executive levels. And I knew there are more women who are as smart as me or smarter than me should be uh, here and they were not. Uh, and, and the second one was, um, I interacted with and I had many work with me, uh, managers in technical field who become, uh, who come to the technical field because they want to be experts, right? And uh, they don't necessarily have great people skills, but they don't get the training. If you're an executive, you get the training. You don't get the training when you're just becoming a manager. So those two gaps were huge for me. And I would mentor a lot of folks and they would come back and tell me, hey, that conversation three years ago uh, really literally changed uh, my career uh, trajectory. And when I would hear that, I said, how do we take that secret sauce and scale it up so we can help millions of women and managers in the technical field? And that was the reason Gotara was formed along with Dana and the rest of the Gotara team and the 150 advisors we have on the platform. That is the secret sauce that we have. Yeah, thanks, Sangeeta. And of course, we are completely aligned on that. That's why we're here. We're here to close that gender gap, the talent gap in STEM plus. All right, uh, before we dive in, I'm assuming all of you who are joining understand this gap and you want some more data on it. And you might already be taking actions in your companies to address this gap. And so I'd like uh, you do, if you could share the poll, I'd like to post a poll and ah, there it is. And just wondering, we're collecting our own data. What is your organization doing today to address this gap? You can pick multiple answers here. So it could be investing more in recruiting, changing flex work or other policies for better work-life balance. Maybe you're doing ERGs, employer resource groups or internal mentor programs. Maybe you're investing in other programs for tech managers and for the women. Uh, or maybe it's none of the above. So let's just take a minute, go ahead and respond to the poll. And then you do, I'm gonna have you post the results in just a few seconds, okay? As you're responding to the poll, don't forget, put your location, your name and your company in the chat. And if you have questions as we go through, please put those in the Q&A section, which you can find at the bottom of your screen. All right, Yadu, are we getting some responses to the poll? Yes. 
All right, let's go ahead and open it up and share the results if you can, and then we'll close that out. All right, so kind of a spread across the board uh, in terms of the different tactics that are pretty common that we're working on. But interesting, 27% of you are saying none of the above. So I'm hoping today we're gonna give you a few ideas so that you can start taking action in your organizations to close this gap. All right, so you do, let's close the poll. Thank you for that. And I'm gonna turn it over to Sangeeta who's gonna share our most latest research on why this gap exists and some of the underlying issues as well that we're seeing. So Sangeeta, if you could share your screen. And we're seeing your, okay. And again, if you have questions, put those in the Q&A. Okay. So perfect. I talked about why I started Gotara. This is about uh, the, the topic of today's webinar is about unspoken reality of the STEM gender gap, uh, talent gap, I would say. Uh, so uh, before I go there, I would say um, a few data points that we have collected on both gaps that I mentioned earlier, and we'll share that. So the attrition problem that we have, 40% of STEM women leave their careers within five to seven years. That's a huge number. It costs US employers $9 billion every year. And by the way, the, during the pandemic, this number has gone up to 50%. Plus, everybody is going to be online, so the STEM plus demand are, is up, and the supply of this talent is down with a great resignation. So all in all, not good news. How do we help the employer and the individuals to turn this around? Um, so first we have to understand the root causes. And you know, I was sitting at the table uh, at various companies I worked at, and we would look at this cliff at five to seven years, and we would say, oh, well, women are at that age, they want to raise their family. And on the surface, it looked right. And I, it looked okay. I wouldn't say it looked right. And I would say, maybe I'm an exception, an exception. maybe I'm different. And so when I launched Gotara, I decided to interview a bunch of technical leaders and women who I truly respect and would hire them any day uh, to understand this problem. And then over three years period, we have collected a lot of data in, on Gotara. It's behavioral data rather than survey data, uh, which can skew the answers. So this is where, since we provide the safe space for people to ask any sensitive questions, we have collected data that has actually busted, surprised me too. And I would say busted the myth that why women are leaving. So here we uncovered the root causes of why women are leaving. So we have about 25,000 members in 175 countries. As they're asking questions, we keep everybody's identity anonymous. Um, we collect the data at a very high level in our categories. And lo and behold, what we find, it is not work-life balance or family reason that they're leaving for. They are leaving for this unspoken reality. They are being undervalued. They have a manager who doesn't support them. They have to deal with difficult behaviors. And in the end, if you don't have growth opportunities, you can be inclusive, you can empower the women, you can value them, but if you don't give them that job, that promotion, none of it is meaningful. So that is what we found. And then we said, now, is this true across the different experience level or does it happen with just certain types of um, uh, group of people? And what we found was, the three, four reasons we have are consistently present throughout their career all the way up to 25 plus years, starting with zero. So even when they come from college, all ready to change the world, they start to experience this unspoken reality first day. And if you look at the darkest uh, dark green bar that continues to grow, it is feeling undervalued. And you can see that it is growing. And that is a worrying pattern 
that uh, employers, and we should be worried about, that imagine the loss of productivity, the loss of motivation, the loss of innovation you have as a result of them being undervalued. So, um, so we continue to look at this data and, um, and we, we dove further into details and we said, now, wh what kind of questions people are asking that to help them with their careers? So they asked two kinds of questions. We categorized them in two kinds of questions. Career related questions like, hey, I'm a data scientist and I want to become the first time member of a team and help me figure out how to do that. That's a career related question. A navigational question is a question where I am a data scientist. I worked on this, these models and my manager presented uh, it to the executives at the organization and never mentioned my name once. And everybody feels that my manager is the one who created the um, models. Now help me figure out how to turn this thing, uh, turn this perception around. So you can see the top line uh, starts to fall, whereas the bottom line in green grows, which is again, a signal of unspoken reality. And, and, and it is a wrong trend. So we need to be really paying attention to this. Now, uh, go ahead. I'm just gonna say, Sangeeta, so we have all of this great data on what the women actually are reflecting in their behaviors on the platform. So this isn't survey. And it is pointing to uh, managers as well, the other side of the coin. So let's dive into the data on managers. All right, let's do that. Uh, as we shift our focus on managers, here is some data that we uh, pulled uh, from the literature. Harvard Business Review, Gallup, Office Vibe. Uh, what we are seeing is 84% of the managers create stress and unnecessary work. By the way, that costs U.S. employers $45 billion in health cost a year. That's a huge cost in addition to the attrition and productivity loss and uh, innovation loss. 69% of managers themselves tell us they are uncomfortable communicating with their employees. Uh, and 50% 50, 50 of the managers have burnt out. And interestingly enough, that, that number has gotten pretty high during the pandemic. So what are the root causes the, uh, of, of, of this behavior, the pattern that we are seeing? And uh, Society of Human Resources Management uh, did a, a pretty uh, large survey and these are the root causes of issues that we see. And it is both the workers uh, 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 within the team or it is the managers themselves who are saying, we need help with communication. We need help with developing our talent in the team. How do I drive inclusive culture? What is it? Tell me at a micro level so I understand, yes, we need to be inclusive, but what does that mean? Uh, how do we, um, actually do team performance. And so we were surprised that it's not the technical expertise of working hard or having the role model. It is these things that are important. So um, next, what I would say is, so what action can you take today from the data that we have shared? And I know you'll have questions. We'll have plenty of time for questions in this session. Um, I would recommend that you know your attrition numbers. When we say attrition numbers, not that's just the generic number, by category, women in uh, different uh, positions, uh, technical managers in different positions. Analyze your leadership pipeline. That is, what is your promotion rate for women, for all kinds of people, uh, underrepresented people, and uh, in general for the whole population? So you can benchmark it. Then clarify your actions for diverse talent that we all struggle with and managers who want help. And then you review the metrics based on the actions you're taking. Are you really making an impact or, or you just say, people say, I feel like a better leader, more engaged leader. To me, I'm a business leader. I want to know quantitative metrics. That doesn't uh, satisfy me. And 
consider upskilling your talent. That is the best way to do it. And so here, transition to Dana and ask her to share what she has observed and what she would recommend to you to do to help solve these problems. Yeah, so I'll tell you what's, what we're seeing works really well. Uh, and again, this is focused on the, that unspoken reality. Women are feeling undervalued, unsupported, and they're not seeing growth opportunities, et cetera. What can we do? And at the same time, the managers are overwhelmed, overburdened, and burnt out. What can we do? So for the last three years, we've been working on this. And what is working today for us? We want to share this with you. Lessons learned here. Uh, we're seeing if you upskill and coach the women and the managers at the same time, you're going to get the biggest benefit. I'll give you an example. Uh, we had a, a person, we were working with a woman, uh, great technical expertise, and she was saying, you're helping me get more visibility. You're helping me think more strategically. You're helping me be more productive. What are you doing to help my manager? And so we found that the pairing of these two things is working really well. The other thing we're finding, a lot of times companies are saying, well, our managers are having a big impact on retention. Yes, they are. Let's do a two-day session on DEI and do a workshop. And there's nothing wrong with that. But what we're finding is if you do it on a more personalized individual level on topics that are of interest to that manager or that woman, you're getting more bang for the buck. And I'll talk about that in a minute. So that's another lesson we've learned. Personalized individual upskilling and coaching is working really well. Uh, we're also finding that instead of doing, you know, like a week long training or one day training even, People working in bite-sized pieces where they're getting some tips and techniques that they can apply immediately is producing results. And the other thing that we're learning that's really working well is while we're upskilling the women and the managers in this way, very personalized bite-sized pieces, they need a safe space for coaching. And coaching here is a little bit different, we're finding. Uh, we're finding more success with coaches who aren't your typical professional coaching group or executive coaches, which are great. We're finding more success with this technical talent, having coaches who are technical leaders who have been there and done that, who are also great coaches. So if we could just go to the next slide, thank you to just for an example, uh, these are the kinds of coaches we're talking about. We actually work with all four of these women. We have 150 coaches like this, this is working really well. <clears throat> upskilling the women, upskilling the managers, they appreciate coaching from someone who has already been in their shoes and can relate immediately to what they're going through and give some great advice and coaching. So that's one of our other lessons learned. As we're doing this, as we're finding out root causes, we're addressing those through this different upskill and coaching model that's working, we're also discovering something else that's really cool. Individuals that we're working with do grow their leadership skills, do make career progress. There's an individual return for them, of course, and the company gets a better pipeline of leaders. Uh, and of course, there's financial benefit. So the more you retain, the less cost you have. And in fact, our numbers say that at least you, you lose $300,000 for each talent you're losing. It's, and it's actually probably a lot more than that. So yes, there's a financial benefit to retaining talent as well. The other cool thing that we're finding though, when we're upskilling and coaching this way, we are getting business ROI. So let me just give you a couple of examples. So we are seeing people as they're going through upskilling and coaching, obviously being better leaders, but they're also impacting productivity for the company. They're impacting innovation. They're impacting the top line growth. Just one example. We worked with one woman who said, I was burnt out. Uh, I used to spend 14 hours a day getting my work done. I've improved my productivity so much, I can work in a nine hour day and I'm not stressed out anymore. Uh, we also have managers who we've been working with in this new model that is successful. And new managers are saying things like, uh, I wasn't delegating well before, I wasn't coaching well before, now I'm delegating better, my team is more productive and I'm supporting my team better. So lots of benefits for finding. So 
that's the data we wanted to share. We do want to open it up for Q&A. And I will just look at the questions here, Sangeeta, and pose a few. Yeah. And the other thing that I wanted to also share is we will follow up with another webinar where we are going to talk about return on investment. How do we revolutionize learning and development by measuring true ROI? All right. Okay. Stop sharing. Yeah. Yep. Oh, here's a question. There's a, a lot of good comments in here. Why do you believe these unspoken realities have not been discussed before? Or why do you think the narrative around women leaving the workplace is consistently about pay, work-life balance, and so on? So the thing is, I'll give you my own example. Um, why did it surprise me, even though I was so um, uh, passionate about this topic and women retention and all that? Um, so I'll give you an example. I was a senior leader, had a large organization. My CTO had a large organization and less than 10% of his organization were women. And when two of those women were leaving, I was given, and I don't interact with them every day, and I was given the answer they're leaving because uh, they have young children, they want to spend more time with that. And you kind of think of that as a noble thing. And if you don't know, you can't bring up the topic. And lo and behold, I find out 95% of the time, uh, women are forced out of the workforce. Uh, only 5% of them leave for work-life balance. So I believe even people under my, in my organization, 95% of the time, I didn't even know the story. I wish I could have gotten in because there is no, no matter how good your company is in all the policies and unconscious bias training, all those kinds of things, you can't police what is going on in one-on-one -on -one conversation. You can't police lunches and, and, and drinks. That is where these things are happening. And you, the woman sees it one time, the second time, and third time they're out. They say, my partner makes enough money. I don't need to take this. I'm leaving. And that is what it's uh, actually the senior leaders don't know. A lot of time we or they have good intentions. If they knew, they could uh, uh, address it, but they don't know. It's just like exit interviews. Exit interviews, even I did not give the real reason why I was leaving because nobody wants to burn bridges. So one has to actually get to the root causes and they have to get to it just in time. And there aren't a lot of things and processes in place to do that. We have found a secret sauce for that where we can find those root causes and address them in time. So Jenny had a follow on. So Jenny was saying, well, these unspoken realities have been spoken about. And I think what's interesting, Jenny, this is my observation. Uh, when you, when we share this with a lot of women, the women will say, yep, we get it. We, you know, this, this is no new news to us. However, I want to tell you, when we are talking to company leaders and we're sharing this, they are surprised. And I know one, for example, we were just talking to, and he said, I've just worked for years changing policies and procedures to have better flex workforce and it's not helping the retention, I think now I know why. So just a data point on that. Yeah. We have um, one minute left, Sangeeta, and I'm looking at questions. I think we are, okay. So there's another good comments for those of you, you can look in the Q&A um, for some ideas on the labor laws. So thank you, Genevieve, I think was posting that. Uh, Sangeeta, what would you like to say to close out the webinar? Um, I would say that uh, everybody who's attending, whether you're a woman leader or you're representing an employer, uh, this is an important uh, topic for all, all employers. Every, every position I was in as a leader in every company, my first focus always was talent. I could not deliver on my goals if I did not have the talent. I would work on talent first, then I would work on process and innovation. And working on talent means looking at your biggest problem areas. And the biggest problem area in the technical field are attrition of women and, and training of the managers that we have. And go have a hard look at that 
how you're doing that in that area. And don't be satisfied with, oh, well, we are at the industry average. Change the industry average. You want to be better. That's what I would say that you need to look at. And, and we are here to help. Tell us how we can help you. Thank you, Sangeeta. And thank you for everyone for joining this webinar. We're going to do another one coming up very soon on how do you get uh, true measures of ROI from your upskilling and coaching programs. So more to come. Thank you so much and have a great rest of your day.